Hogwarts Legacy has so much to offer and even though a lot of features are pretty straightforward, it's also quite easy to miss out on important features and even do things entirely wrong. Hey, what's up guys? It's your man 4EM with 10 useful tips you need to know for your magical adventure, including things you might have missed, which will make everything in the game a lot easier, so let's get right to it. One of the most important things for basically everyone who plays Hogwarts Legacy is to quickly visit the settings and go to the very first tab right here and change your field of view as this one makes a huge difference to what you can see. This is the minimum field of view while the maximum field of view is so much more. You can definitely tell that it's a huge difference. It's gonna make it so much easier for you to be aware of your surroundings and of course also make exploration a lot more immersive. Another setting which I definitely recommend you to change is the camera and aiming acceleration. If you change both all the way to zero, your camera movement will be a lot better. Another thing easily overlooked is that you can actually change the appearance of your character, which is very easy to do by just hoovering over the item which you want to change and then press the corresponding keybind. Another very cool feature many people don't know about is that when you change your appearance and go for a rope with a hoot on it basically, you'll be able to enable this one on your character as well. Make it look like a Sith Lord or a Jedi. I think this is a pretty nice feature to customize your character even further. Make it look like a pretty evil wizard. You might have already come across these riddle or puzzle doors inside Hogwarts and they are a lot easier to solve than you might have thought. The number in the middle basically represents the total amount which you need to have when you combine all three numbers around it. The creatures also correspond with numbers and if you want to know their exact value, well this sheet from the Annex library inside Hogwarts will help you to solve them, but even easier. If you just count clockwise from the bottom left to the bottom right, you can see all the values in order, starting with zero the monkey all the way to the kraken with nine tentacles. During your adventures you will have a chance to stumble upon legendary chests and these fellas look exactly like this. You guessed it, inside you will find a legendary item as well. It's always a gamble though what exactly you will get. So if you want to prevent this, you can basically manually save your progress right before you open it up as every time when you do so, you get this random item. Say you don't like the drop or simply are searching for something specific, let's say gloves, you can load the same save file for as many times as you want to finally get the item which you're looking for. This is especially going to be handy in combination with my legendary item farm which you can find in the top right of the screen to get your hands on at least 20 legendaries in a very short time. Speaking of chests, you can also come across eye chests or eyeball chests in and around Hogwarts as well as Hogsmeade which can be pretty intimidating. Rebellion. If you haven't figured out yet to open one, it is pretty simple. All you need to do is cast your disillusionment spell which turns you invisible so the eye cannot see you anymore and if you back off a little bit and revisit it, it will basically allow you to open it. There you have it, 500 coins. Definitely make sure to spam Revelio inside Hogwarts as well as Hogsmeade to find them pretty easily as there are plenty of them around. Speaking of Revelio, every time when you cast it when standing, you will basically reveal all the secrets or things you can interact with around you and even behind walls, while if you cast it when mounted, you'll be able to discover so much more. So much more in the distance, all the points of interest will basically be highlighted to you from enemy camps to Merlin trials and you can even see enemies from a much greater distance. Right there, for example, at the spider den, we can already see which enemies are around the place. This is especially useful when traveling from A to B and just want to reveal all the points of interest in the areas as all of those will also be added to your map. So if you want to do a Merlin Trials next or maybe complete a couple of astronomy tables, this one is going to come in very handy. Talking about Merlin Trials, some of you are probably wondering how do I get the extra gear slots? I already completed a couple of them but they still don't update. Well, you basically have to claim your reward. If you go to the exploration tab, this counts for other rewards as well. If you click on them, you will basically unlock them. So every time after you've completed a couple challenges, you basically reap the rewards and then you get the extra slots. If you're not a big fan of brewing potions or gathering the ingredients in the first place, I definitely recommend you to get your hands on these fellas as they will basically brew free potions for you every 12 minutes. You can conjure multiple of these hopping pots. You can also change the color or style which they come with. 
This conjuration spell isn't free though, but it's pretty easy to pick up if you have access to Hogsmeade, basically found in the southern part of the village at the Tomes and Scrolls shop. A full guide to that can be found in the top right of the screen, but let's move on to something pretty magical. You can actually catch shiny legendary creatures in Hogwarts Legacy. It's basically the shiny hunting of Pokemon, but I think it is a lot of fun. Once you've unlocked the Vivarium, or a place to nurture magical beasts in your room of requirement, you can hunt for these creatures at their dens, and you will have a small chance to also find one with a star right next to its name and gender. And if you catch that one, it will be a more more rare variant of the same creature, it has the same cell value, it doesn't have more resources or anything else, these are just pretty epic collectibles to get your hands on. I caught a shiny white Thestral as well as a shiny black Hippogriff earlier, which you can also breed to get your hands on even more of them. Definitely something interesting to focus on if you want to do something else other than the main quests or just want to go on an adventure in the wild. Then, last but not least, I've got another nice tip for you for the Room of Requirement, once you've unlocked the Vivarium. But what you want to do as quick as possible is get your hands on this Conjuration spell for Beast items. This one right here, the Beast Feeder, which basically allows you to feed your creatures, so then you only have to groom them and the feeding will be done automatically. I already have one in my base right here, but as you can see, all my creatures are well fed, so I just have to walk past them with my groom and then I can instantly collect all the resources. Very useful if you have plenty of them and don't want to feed them every single time, as over a long period of time, this can be pretty frustrating. All right, there you have it. 10 useful tips to help you on your adventure in Hogwarts Legacy. I've got plenty more things to share with you. So if you found this one useful, smash the like button and let me know in the comments if I should make a part two. In the meantime, I've got plenty more videos for you in my Hogwarts playlist, from gold and shiny farming to the best talents for your playthrough. Anyways, be sure to subscribe if you want to stay in the loop with my future videos. Right now though, it is 4am out. Big thanks for watching. I want to wish you a magical day. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.